This is the best fishing kayak, period. Why is it the best fishing kayak? Let me show you. This is the 2012 Adventure Island. It is 16 feet long. Base weight is 75 pounds. Width is 27 and a half inches. Being very long at 16 foot and relatively narrow at 27 and a half inches, this kayak is extremely fast in open water. However, because of its length, that 27 and a half inches is still very stable and I could stand up, cast, throw the cast net with no problems. But what makes this the best fishing kayak? It's adaptability. So let me show you. In its most basic form, it's an excellent paddle kayak. Being 16 foot long and only 27 and a half inches wide, it paddles very quick, tracks straight, and is very efficient. By inserting in the cartridge where the normal drive would go, it keeps it very hydrodynamic. Next configuration, we add the Mirage Drive. Nothing has given a larger impact to the uh, fishing kayaking than these pedal kayaks, and specifically the Hobie Mirage Drive, but hands-free. Next configuration, we add the single outrigger. And that takes us from a width of 27 inches, just the kayak, to now six feet wide. Now that's stability. And with the addition of the motor mount, I can add the third method of propulsion, the outboard motor, two and a half horsepower Suzuki four stroke. Just like width and length matters, so does height. So this is my casting platform, primarily when I'm fishing the flats. Now adding the second outrigger, that gets me a width of 10 feet by 16 feet. Now that's stability. Our fourth method of propulsion is adding the sail. By adding the sail, the rigging, and a dagger board, we now have a full-on blue water sailing kayak. Well, that's the perfect fishing kayak, my baby out there. Now for my type of fishing, I go the backcountry in two inches of water fishing the flats in spots where flats boats can't even go. But on the other hand, I can just as comfortably go 10 miles offshore and feel comfortable out there and knowing that I'm on a fishing vessel that has three sealed separate containers that it's just gonna be virtually impossible to sink. Plus, I've got four different modes of propulsion that are gonna get me back to shore. And I can fish everything in between. And that's basically fishing on average three to four times a week for the last five years, six years that I've had that kayak. But really though, the takeaways, there's two real takeaways I want you to have from this video. Number one, of all the fish that I catch, I would say probably 95% or even more than 95% of those, I'm just sitting there. I'm not paddling, I'm not Pedaling, I'm not sailing, I'm not motoring, I'm not doing anything but either just sitting there or standing there on a piece of plastic. And would that type of plastic make a difference? No, because I'm not doing anything. As long as it floats and I could stand up or I'm sitting there and I could reel in a fish, I would have still caught the same 95% of the fish that I caught. The only exceptions are mainly is when I'm offshore and I'm trolling, that might be a little different. But majority of the fish I catch, it's just something to stand on, whether it be a boat, a kayak, a paddleboard, uh, a wood log, a piece of styrofoam, okay? So getting from point A to point B, you take those parameters away, it's just a matter of something to sit or stand on above the water so you can fish. Now, if it's that important to get from A to B, and it is for me because most of my fishing trips are realistically, I have three to four hours from one o'clock or two o'clock until nightfall, which during the winter time is five, five thirty sometimes. Okay. And I'm making a lot of videos. I need to get out there. 
it really does come in handy that I could buzz to a spot and get fishing. But if you weren't in that type of a rush and you're the average person, the weekend fisherman, where you're going to take the day and go fishing, does it really make a difference? No. Some place where I can go out to the reef and it takes me 15 minutes, where somebody on a paddle kayak, it might take an hour. If you want to get there by 8 o'clock when the bite starts, you leave at 7. I leave at 7.45. We get there at eight at the same time. And again, it comes back to that same thing. We're just on a platform and we're both fishing and none of that other stuff really makes a difference. So that's one of the key things to think about. Do the fish care about what you're standing or sitting on? No. The second takeaway is knowledge over shiny. <laughs> what that is, is I liken it to back in my younger days, I was a pool hustler. Okay, I was really good and I can make a serious living at that. But just like any sport, my eye on the prize as I was working my way up was getting one of those $1,000 pull cues with the pearl and gold inlays and a snakeskin uh, carrier. Because right? that's, that's what I wanted people, when you walk into place, they go, ooh, look at that guy, look at what he's got there. But once you get beyond that and you start getting into that upper echelon, you, you learn pretty quickly that that level, those guys could pretty much walk into any pool hall go to the janitor's closet, get an old broomstick, and pretty much wipe out anybody in the room because that part of it didn't matter. It's just that knowledge, them knowing what to do. And that kind of carries over even to our sport, kayak fishing. I'm comfortable enough in saying that you can come down with the fanciest kayak or even a boat, okay? And I could go down to Kmart and pick up one of those $150 sun dolphins and I'm gonna outfish you. All right. That's just the way it is. And the reason being is experience and the knowledge of the fishery. I know the migration patterns of the target species down here. I know the bait patterns. I know the weather conditions that affect things. I know what tide conditions will be to where these fish are at a certain time frame because I have that experience. And you just really can't go out there and buy that unless you go out and hire a guide for a thousand, fifteen hunters, and yeah, then you can get that same experience, and then it's more of an even playing field. But that's a key takeaway there is the shiny is nice, okay, but knowledge is better, okay, because you know what's worse than going out and get a hundred fifty dollar send off from Kmart and not catching anything, having a five thousand dollar top of the line fishing kayak with all the bells and whistles and not catch anything, right? Because of that fact, I mean, it's, it's knowledge is power, okay? And our sport, don't worry so much about that equipment stuff. Get something that works, okay? 95% of the fish I catch, I'm just sitting there or I'm just standing there. I'm not utilizing anything except something that's buoyant, all right? But getting those fish to bite, knowing things like all about the bait, okay, knowing the techniques, knowing the patterns, okay, are huge. And if you spend time on those, you'll quickly overcome that, ooh, I want shiny to, ooh, this is fun catching a lot of fish. So uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped out a little bit. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully you found it entertaining or possibly even learned something that uh, might help you to catch more fish or even bigger fish. Now, if you're interested in supporting the channel, you could always pick up some merchandise at my web store at uh, www.allaboutthebait.com. I've got a lot of merchandise to choose from. Or if you're interested in directly uh, supporting the channel, you could think about uh, becoming one of my Patreon supporters. Now, I don't do uh, giveaways on my main YouTube channel, but over on my Patreon site, I give away a ton of merchandise as well as gifts from around Key West. So anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching the video and thank you for your support. Bye.